And I'm with her, <laughs> like not on the fence, because surely our mental health is linked to experience. So often a direct consequence of trauma, of oppression. You see, we're fooled into thinking that it's about biology, physiology, and intrinsic to identity. They tell us that it's in our genes instead of being in the scenes of what happened to us that play out on repeat sometimes, on repeat sometimes, on repeat sometimes. Our great grandmothers were incarcerated, locked away for years and years, left to decay, sometimes shackled in metal vices while slices of their brains were cut out to exercise the threat. And yeah, this meant that sometimes they would forget the horrors, but it also meant that sometimes they would forget their names. I guess it won't come as a big surprise that. Many of our grandmothers were tranquilized, pretty much sedated, and this equated to a, a kind of half-life, often for their entire life. And when this didn't quite sort them out, make them sane, well, they may have well been strapped down whilst electricity was shot into their brain. Lots of our mothers were flooded with old school antidepressants and mass unnecessary womb extractions and reactions to instant hormones, which for some, meant a detour around that midlife rite of passage that may have brought them home. And as for us, well, we are labelled and medicated, disorders allocated, often accumulated, because there's no shortage of diagnostic criteria to explain any delirium or otherwise. There's a disorder for everyone. They're in the book, the DSM-5. That's the place from where they all derive, hundreds of them, all squashed in, all planned. So our disorder has to fit and we need the pills to cure it, to cure us, be our defense. Chemical compounds of modern science that conveniently turn off or tone down our emotions our feelings. Again, if you don't medicate it, it exasperates it, and eventually it's like a tsunami. If they look like a dead animal, that's depression. If your kid has it, get those antidepressants. Because now, even the good ones are having to try. You know, the likes of Ruby Wax and good old Stephen Fry, sadly, still perpetuating all the toxic lies and generally doing a great job of using celebrity status to pathologize. There are two things you have to remember. One is that your condition is serious, very serious, and indeed it can be life-threateningly serious. So we all get to believing that it is about us. So part of me, the heart of me that isn't going away, it's here to stay, needs to be chemically explained. You know, Eleanor London, she wasn't ever asked about what had happened to her or any other past. They just said she had an illness, a kind of broken brain, and that this explained the voices and the corresponding pain. So diagnosed with schizophrenia and written off as a hopeless case. And yeah, you may be thinking this is an absolute disgrace, but it isn't an exception. It happens every day and it's time to change the script now and find another way. We don't have to live our lives forever defined by the damaging things that have happened to us. We are unique, we are irreplaceable. What lies within us can never be truly colonised, contorted or taken away. The light never goes out.